Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone who have joined us today. In the ever-evolving world of clinical research and life sciences, the efficient and accurate collection of data is paramount. Researchers and clinical trial professionals are constantly seeking innovative solutions to streamline the data collection process, improve data quality, and enhance overall efficiency. Electronic data capture systems plays a crucial role in modern clinical trials, helping researchers collect, manage, and analyze data more efficiently than traditional paper-based methods. Today's webinar is about unlocking efficiency, navigating the benefits of EDC in clinical trials. I'm Pooja Sood, your facilitator for today, and I'm excited to guide you through this informative session. Before we dive into the content, let's quickly go over some housekeeping items. This session is recorded, and a recording of this webinar will be posted on our website and emailed to all who have signed up. All participants are by default muted and in viewer mode. Should you have any questions, please use the Q&A section to submit your questions. And if you encounter any technical issues, do not hesitate to inform us in the chat. Please ensure your devices are on silent mode. Moving ahead to today's flow of the session, we'll cover a quick round of introductions uh, about the panel of speakers and about CloudBase before we delve into EDC. Towards the end of the session, we'll be addressing all the questions with our panel of experts. We value your time, so we'll be keeping a close eye on the clock to ensure we cover all the content within the allocated time frame. We encourage your active participation by submitting your questions and engaging with our speakers during the Q&A session. We are here to create a dynamic and enriching learning environment for everyone. Moving on, let me introduce to our speaker panel for today. Sunir Das uh, works as a product marketing manager with CloudBase and has an around eight years of total work experience in the clinical industry. Next is Corinne. Corinne leads the pre-sales uh, within CloudBase and she has around four years of total work in the clinical trial industry. And I'm Pooja, your host and coordinator for today. A quick introduction about CloudBase. CloudBase eClinical is one of the fastest growing unified clinical trial management solution natively built on the Salesforce platform. A unified e-clinical solution helps customers of all sizes conduct clinical trials efficiently to bring life-saving therapies faster to market and improve patient lives. The unified e-clinical solution comprises the CTMS, CTBM, ETMF, EDC, which we will explore today, ClinicalWave.ai, the latest AIML module from CloudBase, and safety and pharmacovigilance. CloudBase teams are currently available in four offices globally, mainly uh, Toronto, Chicago, Hyderabad, and Bengaluru, and is fully compliant with ISO 9001 and 27001, 21 CFR Part 11, Pledge 1%, etc. etc. We have been recognized by the Inc. 5000 as one of the fastest growing companies in America and start US as top five emerging pharmacovigilance startups. Moving on, I'll now hand over to my colleague, Tunir, who will take you through use cases and benefits of EDC. Tunir, over to you. Sure. Thank you, Pooja, for setting the stage with the introductions about cloud business and our products. I would now like to take the discussion forward by speaking about the primary use cases of electronic data capture systems in clinical trials, followed by its benefits that can be leveraged by these life sciences organizations. Okay, so we will start with the five pivotal use cases that underscore the importance of EDC in clinical trials. These include digitized clinical data collection, which essentially indicates a paradigm shift in how data was captured previously using paper concept and CRF forms and the change that has been ushered in by the digital systems. Real-time data validation and query resolution. Again, electronic systems, provide users with the ability and the flexibility to create validation logic to assess data in real time and also collaborate with other stakeholders in real time to get those clarifications to whatever questions they have. CDIS compliant data management, which ensures seamless compliance with the CDIS standards that eventually help in exchange acquisition and archival of the very important clinical data. 
point four, track adverse events and protocol deviations, which again is feasible through these EDC systems and provides the study teams with a vantage point of all adverse events and protocol deviations that occurred in a clinical trial. And finally, point five, which is data authenticity and security, which is feasible because any EDC system that you take up must conform with the strict guidelines of the FDA and other regulatory agencies even before it is taken up for consideration of purchase. Okay, um, with that, uh, we will spend the next few minutes going through each of these use cases in a slightly more detailed manner. Moving to the next slide, which talks about use case one, which is uh, digitized clinical trial data collection. Okay, so um, ED systems, as you would know, do offer remarkable ability to digitize CRFs, providing the flexibility to create intricate forms encompassing various aspects of the trials, such as patient information, medical history, adverse events, and medication records. With EDC, data entry processes can definitely be streamlined to achieve greater efficiency for our study teams and also help reduce errors. This time saved can potentially be used for more valuable clinical research activities. In fact, the usage of reusable form templates help accelerate the data collection processes and also ensure consistency across the study, eliminating the mountains of paper forms that you would previously have used before you know, commissioning an EDC system. All of these results finally you know, result in faster and more efficient data collection and digital records uh, creation that enhance the accuracy by minimizing every and any transcription errors. Moving to use case two, which is um, real-time data validation and query resolution. Again, here EDC systems incorporate robust rules engine to empower researchers and study managers to establish granular validation checks across their data collection forms all the way to the very field level. If the study personnel makes any data entry error, it would trigger immediate alerts, thus facilitating rapid query resolution through the EDC platform itself. As a matter of fact, one of the highlights of the digital EDC systems is the real-time validations, which help to catch errors on the go while you're actually filling in the forms. And this capability has in fact significantly elevated the data quality with the built-in query generation process which also expedites the follow-up resolution as well. Lastly, all of this is made possible because of the seamless collaboration with research or trial sites that is enabled through these EDC systems and which ensures that high quality data is maintained throughout the study. Moving to use case three, which is uh, CDIS compliant data management. So, um, you know, EDC systems are your best friends when it comes to compliance with global regulatory standards. In fact, the use cases of EDC themselves warrant the need for compliance since the system extensively handles clinical data for patients. Now to, you know, facilitate clinical data exchange, the CDISC, which, uh, you know, stands for Clinical Data Interchange Standards Consortium, has been established and it is expected of any EDC system to align as per the CDISC standards for ECRF configuration, workflows, and the data import and export. Furthermore, aligning CDISC's operational data model, ODM, also facilitates in data archiving. In addition to this, having an EDC system for a clinical trial will enable you to stay ready and up to date for regulatory inspections and also offer streamlined reporting capabilities for efficient generation of very detailed reports required for these regulatory submissions. With that, I'll move to use case four, which is about data authenticity and security. EDC systems uphold the authenticity of your data and also ensure its security through strict compliance with FDA and other regulatory agencies. Key features include adherence to stringent access control guidelines set forth by the regulatory agencies. Then there is encryption of sensitive clinical data to shield it from any unauthorized access. Then we have maintenance of a 
comprehensive record of data changes for complete transparency and accountability in case any data records get updated, which you know this basically refers to the data audit, the audit trail of the data. And um, you know, finally, last but definitely not the least, planning ahead for any disaster recovery where data integrity is preserved even in case of unforeseen events, which will ensure that your research continuity does not break because of any data loss errors. Okay, with that, we move to our final use case, which is tracking adverse events and protocol deviations. EDC systems empower study users with oversight such that they can capture, monitor, and track adverse events and protocol deviations in real time. When a patient in your clinical trial experiences an adverse event, the deployed EDC system records those details and triggers notifications to the safety teams and also generates reports for risk management as well as response plan. All of this real-time monitoring contributes to the enhanced patient safety and facilitates compliance with regulatory requirements for the adverse event reporting. Okay, so with that, we have come to understand the use cases of EDC system. So now let's roll up our sleeves and delve into the remarkable benefits that these systems bring into the world of clinical trials. So we all know that in the world of clinical research, precision and efficiency are paramount and innovation is the key. Therefore, the following listed benefits do underscore the importance of these fundamental components which are the building blocks of innovation. Number one, streamlined study initiation. Essentially, the primary goal of any EDC system is to move away from the lengthy processes of study initiation and conduct. With cutting edge technology of today, we can expedite the initiation phase, enabling quicker study launches. You can confidently say goodbye to delays and hello to faster breakthroughs. Second benefit is about the data quality enhancement. Precision is the foundation of accurate study outcomes, as we already stated earlier, and the ED systems do elevate the data quality to unprecedented heights. Every data point is meticulously scrutinized with inbuilt validations and checks to ensure the highest level of accuracy for your clinical research. Benefit three is about serious regulatory adherence. Compliance with regulatory standards is non-negotiable for any clinical research and EDC systems seamlessly align with the CDISC standards, ensuring that your clinical trials are not just efficient, but they're also fully compliant. You can trust your data that it will meet the gold standard of regulatory requirements. Moving to point four, which is about automation, about the form validation checks. Well, you would all agree that to err is human, right? And the human error can be a stumbling block in clinical trials, which is why we have these EDC systems with their advanced automation tools to minimize the data entry errors and enhance the data integrity. With automated validation checks, you can rely on error-free data, allowing you to focus on the signs and not on the errors. Efficient patient engagement, well, um, as you would all believe and also agree upon, the cornerstone of clinical trials industry is patient engagement and the success of any clinical trial hinges upon it. EDC systems facilitate improved patient management and engagement, making it easier than ever for participants to continue with their research. Engaged patients mean more robust and more reliable results for your clinical trials. Okay, so with that, we come to an end of the benefits as well that the EDC systems can provide to you once you are commissioning it for your clinical trials. With that, we'll move on to the next slide where we introduce to you about the brand new CloudBiz EDC 2.0 system. Well, um, you know, with CloudBiz EDC 2.0, you can experience seamless clinical data management, having a user-friendly interface and a cloud-based solution, which is 100% built on the Salesforce platform. And it is designed to efficiently store and manage data while meeting all the essential regulatory requirements and the compliances like FDA 21 CFR Part 11, GCP, GAMP 5, HIPAA, as well as the EU GDPR. 
at the bottom of the screen, you will find the product view that highlights all the major features that our EDC 2.0 solution has and will provide to you. And, um, you know, to be honest, speaking from experience, there are hardly any use cases within the clinical data management uh, domain, which does not get catered by the amazing solutions that we have in this product. So, yeah, with that, I will take your leave and I'll pass on the stage to Cody and Kato for taking forward with a live demonstration of our product. Thank you. Thanks, Tanir. Okay, I'll just share my screen here. Tanir, Pruja, do you mind just confirming that I'm able to uh, yes, share yes, that? Please. Okay, you can see it? Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so before I begin, I wanted to let you know that we'll be viewing the system as a few different personas, a uh, study admin, a study coordinator, a data manager, as well as a principal investigator. I'll give you a heads up when I'm switching between these roles or these users, just so you're aware. Orienting, orienting ourselves, excuse me, we are on the homepage of the Cloud Biz EDC, and I'm currently viewing the system as a study admin. Our main tabs along the top are what we'll be going through today, um, a list of all of our clinical studies we're conducting, the list of sites that are conducting those studies. Forms gives us a comprehensive list of all subject CRS, all of our queries from all studies, all sites, all subjects. The forms library houses our CRF templates, and we have standard response sets, which are the pick list option templates, uh, as well as some reports, dashboards, other uh, main tabs that we'll be, we'll be touching on. So below uh, that on our homepage, we see a dashboard showing us helpful metrics here. The dashboard is nothing but a uh, collection of reports. So um, these, Metrics here, we've got PDs, protocol deviations, adverse events, different queries uh, and information like that. And this dashboard can be user specific as well if you wanted to have different sets of metrics uh, for different users logging in. We'll start with our first tab, our studies or our trials. And this is just to demonstrate that our EDC is flexible enough to allow you to set up and run multiple studies across different phases and therapeutic areas all on one platform. Open up our study record we're working with. We see along the top in the compact layout, some key details about that study, like the status, the phase, plan, total subject enrollment, intervention indication, et cetera. Below that is the path showing us where the study is in its life cycle. Currently, the study is set to enrolling. And then within our study record, we have these sub tabs. Um, so they're capturing relevant uh, study information for this particular study. Uh, we'll be going through these sub tabs as well. So details, these fields that we're seeing captured, uh, the metadata that we're seeing here, these fields can easily be updated to capture less information, more information, a completely different set of information if you'd like. This is just what we have uh, suggested out of the box here. The planning sub tab has our teams. So connecting our contacts to a study, as well as our study setup. This is where we build our forms and our ECRFs. We'll come back to this shortly. The visit plan is nothing but a digitized schedule of events. So I'll open up my version two that I've got working on here. Give this a refresh, maybe my internet's lagging a bit. There we go. 
Okay, so starting with the visit plan overview, it's linked to our study already. I've named it, it's version two, it's in draft mode right now. Um, and it can also be linked to study arms in the event that your study arms have a different schedule of events or a different schedule of assessments that are taking place. Visit details, so I have a few here, very basic setup, um, you, but uh, we have different visit types as well that we can go with, but I've gone with a very basic setup of screening, a couple study weeks and follow-up months. Procedure details, so this is the assessments. You can choose from the preloaded standard library when you're creating a visit plan. Um, so it's really easy to just pick and choose at the time of creation. Otherwise, you can add them ad hoc. I just have a couple of procedures or assessments added there. And then the final result we see is that schedule of events directly from our protocol digitized uh, screening across the top, or sorry, visits across the top, procedures and assessments on the left, and then the numbers just indicating uh, at which visits these assessments will take place. So we'll come back out to our clinical study. Study data, this is where we can view all of our sites and their respective subjects. So a well in general hospital has all of these subjects available here to view their data. We'll come back here. Country, if the study is being conducted in multiple countries. Uh, additionally, it's important to note that our system supports displaying the UI in multiple languages to coincide with the uh, multi-countries. Our clinical site subtab houses the list of all of our sites that are accounts that are conducting this particular study. So we see that these two sites here, Princess Margaret and Well and General Hospital, are set to enrolling. Protocols to track versions, amendments, things like that. And then we have various other subtabs, which we won't be able to get in today, but uh, just taking a look there at some more subtabs we have available to work with. Coming back to our study setup, I'll showcase briefly how a form is built in our form builder. Okay, so we have our forms available here, our eCRF builder here, eConsent builder, pre-screen, and eCOA. These are all going to follow the same kind of skeleton of how the forms are actually built. Um, so I'll go ahead and add perhaps a pregnancy eCRF to capture that. Right, so when I'm adding a form for the first time, it's automatically in that draft mode until it's activated. And that activation could look like a couple different series of reviews from various different parties, um, or just activating the form and having it available. So it depends on your requirements. When I click add section to begin building, we are able to start adding our fields First question. Is the participant the maternal or paternal parent for the pregnancy? And then selecting the field type. So currently our system has over 25 different field types that are supported. Um, taking a look here, just some to highlight file upload, randomization, pre-populate, media can be supported as well. So this one is gonna be a pick list. So I'll search that pick list. 
And then we get to also see your standard response that's coming into play. So I can add my pick list options custom, or I can choose from that standard response set library that we talked about earlier. Select maternal, paternal. I'll go ahead and save that so we can see those pick list options render. Great. When we selected our uh, field type or our response type, we saw some additional features come up for us to work with. So functions, um, help text at a question level. It's currently indicating that this field is a mandatory required field and we're tracking the reason for change. We'll get to see what that looks like shortly. Below that, we have some data variables. Um, this is just an auto-generated number, but we can update this to any label at any time. And we can also add additional other variables. So for example, I'll just make this PGMP. But if I wanted to add my SAS or SDTM Atom um, standards, I can go ahead and add as many as I would like for this particular field. And then below that, just setting the permissions, who has access for this study to read or edit uh, or access this field. I can also import whole sections or entire forms from our uh, library. So our forms library, again, we mentioned earlier that that's where we're keeping our ECRF templates, our form templates. So we have those available to choose from and import directly into our study. So that's just quickly some uh, details and a sneak peek at building a form. I'll switch now to the forms library so we can take a look at what that looks like. The EDC will come preloaded with uh, CDISC compliant commonly used forms like adverse events, um, concomitant medications, physical examination, vital signs. We'll take a look at vital signs form. But the idea is that you create a form once in our form library, and then it is available to import into your next study as we saw, where you can then make further study specific, study specific updates and edits. So we clicked into our vital signs form. I'll give this just a minute to load. There we go. So again, the form builder, similar look to what we were looking at when we were building our forms within our study. We have our sections and our questions or our fields within those sec sections. Let's take a look at our systolic blood pressure field. We can see it's configured as a number, response type, or field type. And we've also got the field variable set up here already. We've checked off that rules are applicable. So the idea is that you're no longer reliant on your EDC vendor to build complex rules and edit checks. We train you how to operate the rule builder. So you can con confidently add these edit checks, reduce data entry errors and increase data integrity overall. So I've got an edit check set up here on my systolic blood pressure. We'll switch personas now to our study coordinator just so we can see this uh, rule or this edit check in action when we're completing our data entry. All right, so I've switched over to our site portal um, the, for the EDC for this specific study. Um, as a coordinator, again, reminder, I'm accessing the system as a coordinator. We were working with the Welland General Hospital for the MAP NHL MMM study. I'll open that up. And the first thing we see for this site, Welland General Hospital, is our study data, all of our subjects for this site, for this study. 
I've got a subject set up here available for some data entry in their screening visit. We can see vital signs is the last uh, form or the last assessment that needs to be completed for a screening visit. So we'll go in there and start some data entry. So we'll start this, uh, say yes, the vital signs were performed. When we answer that question, we get some additional fields showing up based on my answer of yes. Capture the date, pick list field, and then also a number field. Got some kilos. Almost finished here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. So it tells us that our responses have successfully been saved. Ideally, this vital signs form should have a status of complete, but it looks like we have triggered an error message or a bypass, um, some kind of edit check or error that we have to check out to uh, amend. So scrolling down, we see that the error is on our SBP. Um, it's triggered that edit check that we saw implemented it's telling us that the value that we've entered is outside of the expected range that's set on this field, which happens to be 90 to 120 as an acceptable uh, result. So please correct or confirm. 87 is pretty close to 90, so I can bypass this validation uh, and the uh, whoever's reviewing this can take a look at that later. I'll bypass this and it actually gets logged in the audit log as well. All right. So now that we bypassed that, the vital signs is considered completed. And at that point, your data manager, monitor, CRA, whoever's doing that review process would get a notification to come in and complete their data review on that field, or sorry, on that form. So that's all completed and it's just waiting that data review and SDV process. I will now switch gears once again as our data manager this time who will be completing that review of this vital signs form. So our data manager, Victor, coming in to look at that well in general hospital. Take a look at that study data where we have our subject records. And I know that we were working with subject 20 here. We see the screening visit is in review. Expand that screening visit to take a look at the forms within there. So these have already been completed and are considered data locked uh, because we've completed the SDV and the data review on the fields within this form. So that's locked this form and it's now ready for PI signature. So the only thing pending us action wise from a data manager perspective is to navigate to the vital signs that completed form and continue that review process. It's also at th this point that we would be able to issue and assign any queries. So I can take you through that process as well. So we'll say data reviewed. I can take a look at this. So that was bypassed. All right. So at that point, the um, 
monitor whoever's responsible for doing that second set of review against the source data, for example, they would be notified to come in and complete that process. Um, if you wanted to do it in a particular order, you could set that up that way as well. Uh, but I've actually given my data manager, Victor, access to uh, complete the source data verification as well. So I can go through and just quickly do that. We'll see once I start marking these fields as both data reviewed and SDV, they get that status of soft locked. So that just means that at this point, no data can be updated unless a query is also issued. So uh, we'll continue that. I've got my source data open. Take a look, and this should actually read as 87. So I would go ahead at that point, or sorry, 97. I would go ahead at that point and issue a query. Add query. You can assign a priority, low, medium, high. Assign it to uh, the roles that are applicable for this study, or specifically a user of the system. So we'll stick with role and assign it to the study coordinator. And then even further, we can categorize it as a field error or a metric error as per source, SDP recorded at 97, please update. So whoever got uh, assigned that query, this case as study coordinator, they would get a notification on their end uh, to really facilitate in that real-time um, data updating, real-time notifications to shorten the review cycle and shorten uh, getting all that data clean and in the system. So I'll continue and switch back to our coordinator. As we can see, this is now telling us there's a query here on our vital signs within our screening visit. Scroll to the top, it's telling us we have an open query here. So we'll switch gears, give this a quick refresh, take a look at our study data, and we should see that query on our end in a few different places. So I would have got a notification just telling me that there is a query been assigned to me. Give that a second to come through. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so we have a new query has been assigned to you. I can take a look at it from here. Alternatively, I have my queries sub tab here within my site um, to take a look at all of the queries. I can filter, just look at those open queries. We see all the query information and where those queries sit. Or within my study data, I also see that I have a query on my subject here. Expand that out to find where my query is. And I can directly update it from here as well. So our vital signs, which is under review, has a query. One open query for us. Okay, so now we see that this field is editable as well um, for us to, uh, you know, update that if it's required based on the query. Uh, data review has been revoked because uh, that once that field is updated, it'll have to be data reviewed again. So I can take a look at this query. as per source, SB, SBP recorded at 97. Yep, I'll check my sources and confirm that yes, I have just made a data entry error there. I'll update the data accordingly. As soon as I do that, it's gonna prompt me to enter in a reason for change because I previously saved that data that I entered. It's wondering, what is your reason for changing this data after it's been saved already? We'll say data entry error. updated as per query and source. Let my data manager or whoever issued that query know 
that I have updated data for them to take a look. Go ahead and save that. So at this point, the data manager, whoever issued that original query, would be notified uh, on their end that there's a response for them to go check out, and they can then take further action or close the query on their end. So that has now been updated. We'll switch back to our data manager. Give this a quick refresh so that is coming through. That update is visible on our end here. Again, I also have the ability to take a look at our queries uh, sub tab here. If I wanted to look at all of the queries uh, from a holistic point of view, or I can go directly into that subject because I know that we're working with that query. I would also have gotten a notification the same way that the coordinator got their notification of the original query being issued. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so we see that they have updated that to 97 accordingly. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and close this query out and that will get logged as just some query history that's been on the field and it's also captured in the audit log that that has been um, you know queried and resolved and those updates and changes that were made are also captured in the audit log. I can then go ahead as that data manager and continue my data review and SDB on the fields. Okay, so once that is done, again, as you see, these are going to all update to soft lock. No further updates can be made. And that'll roll up to the form level, now considered data locked. The entire screening visit is considered data locked as, to, as per a roll up of all of these form statuses being considered data locked. So at that point, um, the last switch would be to our PI or our principal investigator who would be notified that this record is ready for their signature. The signature process can be done at any level. So currently we have it set to be PI signing off on each visit as they're completed, uh, but you could have it down to a form level that the PI needs to sign off or just the entire subject record as a whole once all of the data entry is completed, it's all data locked, that subject record now needs PI signature. So there's a couple different places we can have that done. So I'll we'll switch now to our final role, which is our PI. They would be notified to come in and complete their signature process, go into our well and general hospital that we were working with, open up our subject we were working with, and we'll quickly bree breeze through that signature portion. Screening visit, see that that's data locked. And now we should see PI signature come up. I've already got a signature here, but creating one is really easy. I can type it, I can draw it, I can upload it. I already have one, like I said, but uh, that is very easy to do. I can store multiple signatures, select my reason and sign off. What that does is generate uh, an authentication, an OTP gets sent to my email. I have a couple seconds here to get that, retrieve that OTP from my email and enter it in to authenticate myself. So I'll just grab that now. The timer that we see counting down there uh, can also be amended as well to give them a little bit more time if you wanted. Validate and submit. And that is saving my signature. We have a couple of details along with that signature. Um, 
again, just reiterating that this is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant, the e signature that we have here. All right. So now those forms are turned green. The visit has turned green because everything within it is now considered PI signed. And I can also view that signature at any point too. So that was just a brief look at our EDC from different perspectives, but there are so many more features to explore um, looking towards the future and what's currently trending. The use of AI will help us eventually streamline our processes and increase the data integrity overall even further. So imagine uploading your source data directly into the EDC in lieu of that manual transcription. It's going to minimize queries back and forth. Uh, or uploading your protocol directly into the system, having the data that we need extracted from it, we could have the schedule of events rendered, relevant forms pre-selected for us for a study based on that uploaded protocol. So keep an eye on your inbox for an invite to our upcoming webinar on enhancing your EDC experience with the power of our ClinExtract AI solution. Thank you for your attention during our webinar, and we look forward to hosting you hopefully again. Um, we'll open it up now to some questions, Pooja, hoping we got some come through. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Corinne. That was definitely quite a detailed uh, demonstration uh, on EDC. Thank you so much. So we have a couple of questions that uh, came through, and um, let me just read out some of them for you. Um, so the first question is around, you know, how does the EDC system integrate with health devices, wearables, EHR, and EMR systems? So, um, Corinne, I think you can take this question up. Yep, absolutely. So in terms of integration, uh, we, the EDC, um, not just the EDC, but also our other systems as well, they seamlessly integrate with any devices, health devices, wearables, those electronic health record systems and electronic medical record systems. And it's gonna allow for real-time data exchange. Uh, again, improving that data in integrity, accuracy, and providing a holistic view of all patient data. All right. Um, thank you. So the second question is, how does the EDC system handle medical coding using MedDRA? Great question. Yeah, we uh, didn't get time to show it in today's demo, but our EDC system simplifies the medical coding process by directly integrating with MEDRA, the MEDRA dictionary. So this allows you to assign standardized codes to the adverse events, as I said, directly within the system, streamlining that safety reporting and ensuring compliance with regulatory standards. All right, thank you. Uh, the next question is um, around customization. So someone has asked, are there options for customization within your EDC system to accommodate specific study requirements or unique data collection needs? Um, Corinne, would you, would, would you be taking this? Yep, absolutely. So customization is no problem. Uh, as you saw, what we set up today was was considered out of the box, but if you wanted to layer on additional customizations for specific study requirements that might be a little bit more complex, that's where we can help you as well. Right, uh, thank you. And the next one is around data security. So what measures are in place to uh, guarantee data security and uh, protect sensitive patient information within the EDC system? I think it's, it's quite an important one, I believe, <laughs> from a data security standpoint. Yeah, sure. Uh, Corinne, would you want to take this up? Yeah, great question. Um, the EDC system, it's designed with a strong focus on being regulatory compliant. So this includes 21 CFR Part 11, CDISC standards as well. We uh, have a range of features and controls and best practices in place already to safeguard the data integrity, um, facilitate those compliant electronic signatures in lieu of wet and signatures and support standardized data collection and reporting. So it's going to ensure the highest level of regulatory compliance uh, for all of the clinical trials being conducted on our system. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I think I just have one last question and um, it touched bases on the unified um, e-clinical solution as a whole. So uh, the question is, can you elaborate on the integrations with um, cloud-based CTMS, ETMF, uh, safety and PV. 
Uh, I think it's around how does yeah. each two integrates. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, you did mention earlier, um, just in the introduction there that we have that unified platform and those uh, additional modules. So the EDC system, it integrates with our CTMS, as you know, the ETMF, patient recruitment, safety, and PV. Um, the idea, again, is that it's accessible for you all in one platform. And that integration that's existing between those modules is going to optimize study operations at all uh, levels of the study being conducted, data traceability at all points of the data, and uh, safety monitoring. So that's going to enhance the overall trial efficiency. Great, great. Thank you. I think that's all the questions that I've received today. But but if there are more questions, um, uh, I request all the attendees to send us an email on uh, info at cloudbase.com and get in touch with the team. Or you can book a demo to see the product live in action. Again, you can go to info at cloudbase.com. Um, so as we approach the conclusion of today's webinar, I want to extend my sincere thanks to our speakers and all of you for your active participation. Your curiosity and engagement make events like these truly rewarding. So before we wrap up, remember to look out for a follow-up email containing the webinar recording, additional resources, and ways to stay connected. Also, keep an eye on our website for updates on future webinars and events. Thank you once again for being a part of this insightful journey. Stay curious, stay engaged, and until next time, have a wonderful day.